Let's take a closer look at the latest pictures and information of the new 2026 F1 generation. First of all, let's have a look at how F1 Aero was in the past. In general, the problem of an open wheeler race car are its open wheels. A rotating wheel in the airflow is not very aerodynamic and creates a dirty wake, so disturbed air. If a wing runs in clean air, it produces lots of downforce. When this wake hits the wing, it produces less downforce. So, in general, Formula cars try to keep the wake away from the downforce producing parts. They usually do this with barge boards. The F1 cars of the past did this to an extreme extent and were outwash monsters. They created outwash with their front wings, they blew air through the front rims, and they had very complicated bargeboard areas. All to keep the front wheel wake outboard. The result of massive outwash is that the dirty front wheel wake travels along the sides of the car and the center stays clean. The car produces more downforce. When this clean air gets thrown up at the back, if air goes up, car goes down, the dirty wake closes in behind the car and the next car is driving in the wake, losing lots of its downforce. In other words, cars cannot follow each other, which results in less overtakes and boring races. That was the situation until 2021. Now, in 2022, the FIA changed the rules to avoid exactly that. The front wing had to be backed off at the sides and the end plates were a lot simpler. Any flow through the rim was forbidden and the rims completely closed. Even the brake cooling flow had to exit on the inner side again, just to avoid any kind of outwash. Additionally, the bargeboard area was completely removed. There was much less outwash and racing got better, but naturally teams are working on getting back that outwash to be faster. Now in 2023, we already know how teams got around this. They used the angled section of the front wing and even slot gap separators to create outwash. They used the outer strake of the floor entry as barge board. They extended the bodywork to the maximum in order to create a huge wall which keeps the front wheel wake outboard. And we could see that this worked and teams generate more and more outwash. The FAA now presented the first concept car for 2026 and that is another level of an outwash killer. First of all, the front wing is much narrower, so it cannot produce any flow along the outside of the front wheels anymore. And the next big step is that they created two large boards which guide the front wheel wake inboard and keep it there. So in contrast to 2022, they are not just taking away the parts that create outwash, now they even create new parts to actively produce inwash. That should keep the wake inboard so it hits the rear wing and gets thrown up. In that case, clean air would close in behind the car and the car behind runs in cleaner air and can follow more easily for better racing. Additionally, the cars need to get lighter and they do that by making it 200 mm shorter, 100 mm narrower and change the wheels from 18 to 16 inch. They talk about 20 to 30 kg in weight savings. But an option would also be to remove the weight limit, so reducing weight would be a development topic for teams. If we take a closer look at the concept car, we can see that it's a modified version of the old 2022 model, but now with Ferrari style rear wing pillars and DRS. The rear wing changed to now four elements and the upper three elements should be active, just like the front wing for a stronger DRS effect. Interesting by the way was also the front suspension with a knuckle style Mercedes design to lower the car while cornering. In terms of drivetrain, the cars will split the power between combustion and electric 50-50. Because they didn't want to make the logical step of using front electric motors for higher recuperation, the energy they can generate now during braking at the rear axle is not enough to recharge the battery. So the car will have to burn around 30 kg of its fuel to produce electricity. There will be no MGU-H anymore, but a much larger MGU-K. So what do you think about the new generation of F1 cars? Is it a bad compromise or the right step? Let me know in the comments below and if you are interested in working in F1's aero development, check out my online career accelerator program. It's an intensive six week course, which helps you to prepare yourself for a career in F1 with Cartier V6 licenses and lots of valuable knowledge you can only get from people who worked in the industry. 
The first people who finished this course are already working in F1's aero departments, so you could be the next one. Check out the course with the link below and make sure you state that you found the course through my YouTube channel. See you at the next one.